being that I was in Portugal, where Say had always been popular, and being that it was also 2004, I wasn't really privy to the infamous Sega ads for Dreamcast games or Sonic Adventure 2. No, by that time I was old enough to pick up a controller, whether a PlayStation or a Dreamcast controller, Sega had moved on to other things. Namely, Sonic Heroes, supporting the GameCube with Sonic Parts, and the Xbox with sequels, with sequels to the rap piece. God, how I wish for this already future! But I was stuck from winning the past and reason. I would get my PlayStation 2 in 2006, as a gift I still recall fondly. It blew my mind, but for the meantime I had a drink guess. Why do I bring this up? Because I've got a feeling that when people talk about Sonic Adventure 2 nowadays, they really mean Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, the GameCube port. I'm not kidding by the way, other than Mario and Smash Bros, it's probably the biggest seller on the system. Some people really think it, this is the first and last instance where Sonic was winning 3D, at least until Sonic Generations. Some people see this as the beginning of the decline of Sonic, well, other than Dark Hatter in the 90s, can anyone say I am evidently a Sonic fan, as it's customary for a Sega fan to be a Sonic fan, from the original 16 bit classics to Sonic Forces, going through generations, many, and adventure. Up until Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the plot had always been soft after Robotnik 3 would win animals from castles. Sonic 3 had meant to be set up a more intricate plot. So it's all in the manual, but what has never been too important for a Sonic game. Of course, Sonic Adventure tried telling a compelling narrative at that, at that point. It had effective moments, but the mild animations, <laughs> the fact that the full story had to be repeated by six characters, sort of hoarded chaos for anyone. But Sonic Adventure 2 is where things start to go on the plot, man. Plot is king here, first and foremost. But we need some avatar cutscenes. The point and the plot takes a pretty dark turn here and there. Do I didn't understand English at the time I put the game on the Dreamcast, the ending still got to me. Dr. Edward starves a military base in search of a secret weapon, which was developed by his by grandfather General Robotic. Now what he expects to find, we don't know. But what he does find is a black hedgehog who self proclaims itself to be the ultimate life form. Not that Eggman sees that, as he thinks it's Sonic. Despite the different colouring, the rubber skates, the chest hair, it's not the first or last time this will happen in a Sonic game. Eggman, the feminist genius, thinks this is Sonic despite the, bear, the fact he barely got there. What, does he think Sonic has my running power? I know he's fast, but damn. Sado plays the humble card. Thanks Eggman for releasing him and tells him that he soon get the kill emeralds and head towards the space comedy arc. Or Gerald work. Out of all mentioning this strange girl named Maria. Meanwhile, Eggman, because he's a double dipping bastard, decides to steal the Master Emerald from Knuckles, who's having lady trouble? This is Roots, a steel thief and a origin to gun. This was equivalent to the United States with military. You'd think that the KS Emerald would be safe, seeing as in every other game prior to this, with the exception of Sonic Adventure, they were kept in pocket dimensions with for that hack mini games to collect them. But apparently someone decided a bag would be safer to keep them, because Sado steals one from a bag. Yeah, they're in zones of immense power, but they think the pocket dimension thing would be safer. Don't they just fly away after being used to our Dragon Balls? Evidently not. Unfortunately, everyone mistakes Sado for Sonic, so they cast him off screen. Sonic manages to escape, running across the city in the city escape, to confront Sado, who just sort of grapple goes away using a mysterious ability called Chaos Control, which allows him to teleport. While Tails goes to rescue Sonic with the help of Amy, the villains meet up at the Space Comedy Arc, where Sado explains how the Eclipse Cannon work. Apparently, if powered with the sound Kills Emerald, it's capable, capable of releasing a beam of intense energy that destroys the planet. It's here that Rose offers to be part of their team, which they agree to. They agree to steal the Chaos Emeralds together, with Rose taking part in the White Room They just don't... They don't just stick to breaking and entering, however, as they point to blow the goddamn island off. It's worth mentioning that Rose, as a double agent, works for Gan, could just ask for the Emeralds, but, you know, reasons. After an air escape with Ted, with Santa rescuing Rose, 
via chaos control, and both Sonic and Sano escaping Prince Diamond, that just rolls up, yeah. And when Excavate sees the fairest stage of attraction in the world, after all, he now has six of the seven chaos emeralds, and just to demonstrate his power, he destroys half the moon. That would probably mess up the planet pretty bad, what with the tides and the gravitational pool and other science things. But don't worry, after this game, it's very rarely mentioned again. Not in Sonic the Hedgehog, not in Sonic and Wiz, not in Generations, ah, Sonic 06 removes death. Sonic and Tails go and find the president. President of the world, of this fictional country, just of the city, capital city, never stated. He's just referred to as Mr. President. They also meet up with Knuckles, to it's a complete accent. After all, Knuckles had been so busy getting wary. No, but Knuckles has been pretty much in inconsequential to this story so far. He's just searching for the emerald pieces. Rosen Saddam says Tails are out since he's got the last emerald. Wow. Tail, Sonic, and Knuckles head for Eggman's hidden base, which is inside a pyramid. Of course! But after having a hell of a time entering it, they're confronted by Eggman. I guess how the suit and keep searching and bossing him time to arrive. He misses the egg column, which Sonic strikes up the molasses, and while he deals with that problem, the creature turns the against Eggman, what will quickly become a trend over the years. The trend being goes to find a space saddle. Yeah. Up until this point, Edward had apparently been teleporting himself to the space comedy arc. Because fuel's expensive and settles are not that aircraft to be. Um, but he has a spare saddle. So Sonic tells Knuckles to go for a ride. And so admits it again. There's no conceivable reason for this saddle to be here, but they're heading towards the space comedy arc. But Knuckles, big surprise, messes it up. And so off to space he goes to find the Emerald Sarge he went out. Meanwhile, Tails had a plan. He's created a fake emerald without the same characteristics, but nowhere near the same power as the real one. He intends to switch them. Unfortunately, I would already know that there's a fake, since with this one he'll have eight, and there's only seven, six in the first game. For my tricks, he tricks Tails into Sonic. He tricks Tails into. He tricks Tails and sends Sonic off to die. This might very well have been the end of your adventure, but if you're playing the hero side story, it's revealed that, at the last second, before becoming interstellar, Sonic managed to use CHAOS CONTROL! Up until this point, it's been implied that something that only Sonic can do as the ultimate life form, and he has only done it with the chaos. But I guess given this one has other real properties, Sonic sounds Sonic doing it half of twice, He's under a lot of pressure, he's just a quick murderer. Sano confronts that poor hedgehog, but he re enters Ark only to find Roos stealing the emeralds from them. He calls Roos that agent, Roos the Bat, which might indicate he knew who she is, who she was, but he presumably was too shy to say anything. Sano goes to stop Sonic once more, and Eggman manages to put the final chaos emerald in the kennel. Now, Girl's Troop One is unveiled, as, after putting on the seven emeralds in the cannon, the space county is set on a cross course towards Earth. Geralt admits to this in his execution video? Yeah, it's pretty goddamn clear what it is, even if I didn't get it as a kid. He's bitter because the military stormed the Ark after fearing its power and killed Maria, his granddaughter. This would make her Eggman's cousin, but he never reacts to that name, not with pause, not with trepidation. In fact, on the emotional tone for Maria stuck with Sado. Sado seems pretty content with himself as this was his ultimate goal, get revenge for Maria, who he thought was to make humanity pay. After a bit of prodding by Amy, he, Amy, he reminds him what he, she's reminded of what Maria actually wanted, to give humanity a chance to be happy. Yeah, it's important that Sado throws in this room for 15 years, it was stick around by Geralt to think that, but Geralt was arrested and presumably executed pretty soon, so he would have no time to do that or set the to fall. So, yes, yeah, Sado might just be dumb. <laughs> Sado rushes in to help and has a tussle with the real ultimate one. Well, I know everyone makes a joke, but how do you go for a giant ass wizard 
on life support to the weak mode of tiny hedgehogs speeding design. Shadow defeats it, but unfortunately the Bio Wizard fuses with the Space Cowboy Arc intent on crashing. Sonic and Shadow are now, now with the Chaos Shadow to go super, and to the sound of one of the most epic songs in the Sonic franchise, they hit the weak spots, dodge razors, and fight it to a standstill. Unfortunately, in one final heroic moment, Shadow falls down to work. Is he dead? It's this the end of Shadow the Hedgehog. Ha! No. But he didn't know that at the time. So, everyone thinks that they're adventure. No closer rules, Sonic, Amy, and even those today were having a heart to heart. They'll face one another some other time. But for now, the sacrifice Shadow has made is still heavy on their hearts. <coughs> what are my thoughts on the game? Sorry, it's really a mixed bag. It's definitely entertaining. I'll give it that. There's no worse since seeing a game could commit to being boring. No, the story is definitely entertaining. Of course, that doesn't make it a good story. It simply good jumps from place to place, help the characters don't do anything important, or serve only one single purpose in the story that could have been easily swapped out, and worst of all, it was to live up to its potential. I really shouldn't send the plot for what it could have been, rather than what it actually is. But for a game that raises such questions, it ultimately flows to ask them. It's more in what you assume and think you do know than what you do know. The game itself features a better presentation than Sonic and Vero, though it's still playing with sound mixing issues. Music over maps and soundtracks, characters talk at the same time, or do they wait for one another to finish? In the end, the game does manage to present a heartwarming, and some might say even get racing final. Shadow might have been unlikely, arrogant, and odious. But learning about his backstory, one did really learn to care for him. He sacrifices a pivotal point to which the story ends. Though it's easy to know, I think it works. In terms of presentation, I mean, it's Sega's Mascara. There's a watch Sonic came on the Sega system, and it's filled with love. After nights, after Sonic Adventure, after some of the Amigo, Sonic Team had a strong handle on Dreamcast, and it shows. I played the Steam version, but even the original Dreamcast ran for the first time at 60 FPSs. Well, 50 in my case. I remember having the option to switch to 60 to test it at a bottom of reason, but my own CRT never did handle it. I. I. I alternated between Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 constantly, so much so that they best to get it into one single entity. So I knew that Sonic Adventure 2 didn't have hub worlds, and Sonic looked even more monkey, but it wasn't until I replayed it for several times that it grew a distinct identity for me. That's not to say it was memorable, it was. It was a pair of childhood. I've played the game a lot, and I do mean a lot, but since the hundreds of hours I've put into the Dreamcast version, with a while this reading CD drive, the results of the PS3 version and the Steam version, around it's probably one of the most played games personally. I have 70 hours on the Steam version alone. Let me be clear, Sonic Adventure 2 is not without its problems, which I will get into shortly, but I've got to be able to identify my biases. As part of my childhood, I have to make an effort to see Sonic Adventure 2 in a good light, rather than the nostalgia to the rose glasses. Sonic Adventure 2 is divided in three different gameplay styles. Now, there's two stories and six characters, but each of them plays in one of three different archetypes. Speed characters, mech characters, and treasure hunting characters. Now, one may wonder, why he stay with a mech? If I'm given to understand correctly, he was added rather weight in the development, as Western fans can point about the lack of playability of the characters. So, more to the point, the mech characters control take a while to get used to, but they work fine enough. Running along a straight path for a few seconds greatly increases the speed. The mechs can walk on to enemies. Unfortunately, doing so uses the most obnoxious sound effect there is. The one wins, no joke, caused me to turn the TV down when I was in sound. They feel heavy, and some jumps would be filled because of it, but that's to be expected from a giant tank. It seems Tim's house finally put bending gears on his plane, and he never moves that form. Actually, that's not true. The developers did program Tim's flying and jumping in the Chaos Garden. Chaos Garden? Chaos Garden? is something that I would get in this video. Because I enjoy Sonic in Return 2 as a platformer more than as a virtual pet simulator. I've had people put hundreds of hours into the child garden. As it stands, Tails is fine, and Sweet's not for anyone. 
Remember this site has a nasty tendency to involve platforming, hanging off these benches to suit. When the control feels as heavy as they do, every jump jump beats one grid. But it that's a problem that soon alleviated with the jets. Throughout the adventure, one can find power ups, some obstacles, some better try. The biggest for the max characters are probably the Vulcan Cannon, allowing them to break silk rates, and then jets, allowing you to cover in mid air temporarily. While Sonic and Shadow get to watch me that's now massively improved from Sonic Inventor since you don't have to wait for like 5 seconds, and Sonic, and Sonic alone gets the mouth spread to it, which I really love to abuse, now because the rooms get a few items as well, ranging from useless sunglasses as well, really, to practical like the summer claws, that would allow them to dig underground. We, the problem of platforming alleviated by the Z's gameplay, but there's a Dr. Eggman, part. I goes down to shooting as many targets as possible, as quickly as possible, opening doors and watching your way through the path. I've seen many complaints online about those being stuck in the mix, and while I do agree that Eggman's stages are better inside, those ones aren't down that bad. There isn't none who's half treasure hunting stages, but like the previous game, where if you were anywhere near an emerald, started beep. Now it only works one at a time. That's bad design. I've had a many a time in my playthroughs where I was near an emerald piece and I didn't even know it because the that wasn't the piece the game wanted me to find, but oh, I returned and there it is. The prospect of the emerald is also so random, however, not truly so. There are a few dozen pretty sports paths to where it switches, but won't give up or dying. So people who know what they're doing read a hit murder and can find it within 20 seconds. That is, except in cases where the hits are reversed, and uh, just for that wrong. I agree that fundamentally, just because one knows how to avoid the hurdles the game throws at them, that doesn't make it better design. In fact, I agree that it should be up to the player to find ways not to break the game. But the game is not broken. The no, the rules are around box 10. They often whoop, and one, the one or two times where that doesn't happen, where their warrant is throwing, just makes it the worst weapon through the game. So it might be innovative, but the gravity mechanic in Man World is nowhere near as well implemented as in Mario Galaxy. That's to decide, one doesn't play Sonic Adventure 2 for the Emerald Hunting stages, though they show great creativity, though they are often divided in subsections, and though they can be mastered, most people play Sonic Adventure 2 for the speed characters. Man, it starts out with a bang, with CT skin, and it just goes up here for real. There are many things that make a Sonic game great. But one thing that's always been true is a serious sense of speed. Going fast is a reward, a thrill, and the game, this game does it perfect. Exploration does suffer to make this game quicker. There are only one or two routes through a level, and sometimes rather obvious ones, to mark the way with arrows, arrows to where you should go, for goodness sake. But going fast is the most fun thing you can do in this game. When one plays a game well, and it's entirely possible to do so, it's a spectacle. There are 180 emblems to collect, but senses are most players will only repeat the speed stages over and over. It has set pitches that reward skill, such as the higher reaching rocket put in Battle Harbor. It has time stages. I don't really hate that. A countdown? But Sonic and Center are just so quick to control it's no problem. However, they too aren't without their issues. Controls can be sweeper. That is to say, going after a trail of rings to die out in the middle of a pit, coming attacking into nothing might not seem like big news. Can be played on vibe on the Kermit's player, not the game. But they do happen. No worries, it's this more apparent than in the Rebel Fact. Where one is pitted against Shadow or Sonic, depending on the mode, and they're supposed to humming attack them and hit them from behind. The times I fall from the stage, it's just too small in the arena. And the game, playing it again for a review, has a huge problem with things coming out of nowhere to hit you. It's lasers, it's explosions, it's enemies popping out of nowhere. The camera doesn't help. While it can be controlled, and most of the time it walks out to the proper place, there are times where. Uh, what are you doing? But I truly do enjoy Sonic Adventure 2. It's not a ton of issues, it's an unbalanced game, but for one who seems to enjoy a turn of it. I'd be lying if I said I didn't groan when it came time to play treasure hunting stages. The mechs are a uh, pain in the butt, but when it hit high, it hits a really freaking high. I've put 70 hours into the sim version, and who knows how many more into the original version, which I don't own anymore. I'm certain that in a few months' time I'll replay it once more. 
Et bah, c'est pour le jour, et bah, au cas, c'est ouais.